All right, everyone. This is going to be a quick little video. Well, hopefully. I wanted to talk a little bit about things that you could do that go along with Chapter 5 if you have a simulator at home, things that you might try. So Chapter 5 was all about electronic navigation. So the first thing I'm going to do here is, you know, what's one of the easiest things you can use a VOR for? You can use it to locate yourself. So I have gone ahead and, you know, I'm starting here at Bloomsburg. I've dialed in the Milton VOR and also dialed in Sealens Grove. So I have Milton VOR in my number one nav and Sealens Grove in the number two nav. Uh, Sealens Grove is on 110.40 and Milton is on 109.2. So if I look here, you can see it on my screens. Now this is X-Plane with the standard Skyhawk and you might be able to notice that yes, I have 109.2 for Nav 1 and other things to notice the enunciator is saying nav. That's the little light above that. And if I look at the Garmin unit itself, it says VLOC for VOR or localizer, not GPS. In other words, that's what's driving the CDI, the top CDI, which is associated with nav one. And the bottom CDI is associated with NAV2. So this has a Garmin 530, 430 stack, which is pretty nice. So step one, can we locate ourselves? Well, I'm going to go ahead and turn this OBS until this needle centers the from. Currently, the arrow is pointing up. So that's a two indication. Let me keep on coming around probably going to set her around 100, 110. Okay, so that's pretty much centered there. That looks like 109 or so. I can use the Sealens Grove VOR in order to triangulate. Go ahead and Ten. this until it also centers with a from. Too far, and that's centering at it looks like about 65 or so. So, that's you know the easiest thing to do with a VOR, something you may have done as a student pilot or even as a private pilot if you're trying to figure out exactly where you're at. Uh, I always recommend for student pilots, in particular, if they're going on a trip, find a VOR to the side and use the cross radials, if you will, from that VOR in order to verify that you are in fact over the correct little town that you think you're over, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, a lot of people say, but I have GPS and, you know, they've kind of ignored, you know, what it is that you need to do in order to fly with VORs. And that's going to come back and bite them as they try to become an instrument pilot, even though GPS is increasingly important, especially for flying IFR. Uh, you still need to understand these fundamentals of using VORs and such. Okay, so that's assignment number one. That one's pretty easy. Uh, assignment number two, fly to the Milton VOR. Do that, my VOR, and I'm going to center the needle. with a two indication and that will give me my approximate heading at number two so it looks like i'm going to have to have a heading of approximately uh looks like 289 or so should get me there and what i want to do is fly to that vor and then once I get there, what I want to do is fly out on certain radials, fly for a little while, and then turn around and try to fly another radial. You know, kind of play with that 
a little bit. So that would be part three to this exercise. So I'm going to go ahead and fly part two now. And we're off. Rotating. Getting a little bit of altitude. And starting to turn toward our VOR. Going to go ahead and climb up to about 3,000 feet. Which of my current settings should put me right in the clouds. Going to give myself just a little bit of an intercept. Another thousand feet to go. This is another thing I recommend that you do when you're flying IFR. You should count up and count down to various items. So, you know, 800 feet to go till my target altitude. And when I'm coming down, same thing. Yeah, especially when you start doing approaches, this becomes a really good idea. I'm going to go a little bit to the left now that my needle is centered. 600 feet to go. By the way, I'm making a small adjustment here. So when you're making a small adjustment, nobody says that you have to make standard rate turns. If you're just trying to turn a little bit, turn a little bit. You don't have to make a drastic turn to your new heading. And of course I'm maintaining my scan here. I've got 200 feet to go. And there we go. Nicely in the clouds right at the time that I uh, hit my 3000. So of course in the real situation this is where things would be really iffy because the most turbulent part of a cloud is the interface. And that's exactly where I am right now. On the interface of the clouds. Let me see if I can get things stabilized here. I'm in solid IFR. Back some more. See that my needle's starting to move a little bit. So I'm going to correct a little bit to the left. Here's another fun thing that sometimes you run into when you're flying IFR where you're popping in and out. I've got a little bit of a correction going on here. Bring that needle back in. Remember, don't accept deviations. as I get closer and closer this is going to get more and more sensitive. I'm pretty close to it now. If you look over at my Garmin 530 you'll notice that I'm on top of it. The first time you do this in your simulator I, I wouldn't recommend you necessarily uh, hardcore as I did here where you know I've got I've got some precipitation and some other things going on. All right, so I'm just going to pause for a second. So that's that's part two of your homework. Uh, part three, what are you going to do? Well, part three, you want to try to fly some standard radials. Now, you know what can you do? Uh, this is a little exercise that I certainly did when I was getting my instrument rating. You can fly out on a particular radial. You can try to turn around and then come back. Of course, the best way to do that would be to fly something called a procedure turn, which we haven't talked about yet, but we'll get there soon enough. Uh, so that's you know something else that you can do as an exercise. So you know, right now I'm going kind of west-ish. I could go into my sim here and I could just reset the 
I'm going to fly outbound on that west radial. So I could try to intercept that and then fly that outbound a little bit. I could turn around. Uh, and since we haven't talked about procedure turns just yet, what you could do to turn around is simply turn around and let's say I'm going to the west. If I turn to the right, maybe I come back in inbound on the 280 radial, which has a reciprocal of 100. So I could dial in 100 and then I could track that inbound and then track it out for a little bit and just keep doing that a little bit. You know, just challenge yourself. You can turn to the right and then turn to the left and go back and forth. And that's something else that you could do. I think it would be a nice exercise for you and it would be a good challenge.